put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Amazing Spider-Man 1990 game review for the Game Boy or the NES. Spider-Man's love, Mary Jane, is abducted because, yeah, that's, that's a plot. And he gets on the walkie-talkie, I guess, or maybe cell phones just look like, you know, it's, it's the big brick kind of cell phone, maybe it's just, you know, from, from that time. Anyway, and he basically, in every cutscene in between levels, he's talking to a new of his biggest arch nemesis, biggest villains that Spidey has ever fought. And yeah, I guess they just banded together to, you know, take him down once and for all. And obviously each level ends with you fighting the person that, you know, taunted Spidey during the, you know, the, the cutscene before that. And Spidey's wit is very much present in those cutscenes, so we know that Sam Raimi didn't direct them. And yeah, going on to the gameplay, this is basically a side-scrolling... I hesitate to call it a beat-em-up because pretty much... Well, basically every enemy that isn't a boss enemy dies with one blow, so I, I don't know, but... I'm not sure there's anything else I could really compare it to, but yeah, it's, it's basically like the Power Rangers game that I also reviewed. You, you know, side-scroller, a bunch of enemies come at you, you have to take them down. However, this has more sort of diversity in the enemies than the Power Rangers game. And, you know, basically you have a, diff a couple of different ones. You'll be going through an alley, you'll be climbing a building, you know, all of it t of course takes place in New York City, so, you know, it's all New York locations, including one where you go through Central Park, which apparently has deadly birds and World War II era submersible mines, hand-sized by the way, dangling from trees and falling down when you pass under them. Anyway, it's a strange place. And with this setting, it is, of course, a bit obvious that health pickups all take the form of hamburgers. You know, that's, that, that's the closest thing you get to healthy food in Manhattan, I think. Anyway, you're going through these levels, and there's the stock bad guy. Who's, they basically only did Drew one, you know, one of henchmen. And... He'll be, you know, occasionally shooting from a position where he'll, like, typically stand, shoot, then duck behind something, and, you know, you have to avoid the incoming bullets and somehow get your way over to him. Sometimes you'll also be able to shoot them. More on that later. Or he'll come straight at you, in which case, this is where they got a little bit creative with it, he will... You know, there are a couple of different weapons that he'll wield. He might be, I, th I think one of them's supposed to be like a steel pipe. One of them's definitely a knife. And, you know, some of them just go straight at you with just their, their fists, which is pretty courageous considering you're Spider-Man. And, yeah, that, that then there are a couple of other different types of enemies. Like I said, the killer birds. Also bats, for some reason. I don't know, maybe he ticked off Batman last week or something. I mean, the two do have a slightly strained relationship. Anyway, before I said that the 
you know, the henchmen are really brave taking on Spidey in a, a, a fist fight, then again, maybe they just realize just how little health you have. I have not found a way to increase your lives in this game. Uh, Note that I, I don't have a manual, but yeah, you start with two lives and you're really, really going to want to keep those for as long as absolute, for as long as possible at all, you know. You die with just a few hits, I think maybe five or six hits, and you die, you know. And note that being hit might be as little as just touching one of these henchmen, you know. It doesn't matter if they're not even attacking, if they just pass through you or something, they're gonna hurt you. And there doesn't seem to be any grace period, so if you get hit, you know, you can die in a matter of seconds in this game if you just keep standing in something that keeps hurting you. I don't think there's, there's maybe like a fraction of a second, right after you've been hurt, you can't be hurt for another half second or so, but then you can't be hurt again. And, you know, well, I would say that you can't stun enemies, but again, they die with one hit. And, and that pretty much goes, I, I don't think there's any actual enemy in this game that isn't a boss enemy that doesn't die in a single hit. So, maybe they felt that that evened it out, but <laughs> it, it really didn't. It just makes it frustratingly difficult, but also really, really satisfying to actually get through. And there's kind of a <laughs> lame joke there at the end, and the game has a high score table, so, you know, there is actual replayability. But with that said, this is one of those games where they basically made it insanely difficult so that you wouldn't just, you know, play through it you know, really quickly, because it's a really, really short game. You're just, you're not going to get through it in a single sitting, that's all. But there, there's no password system, there's no, if you die in level 5, you have to go back to level 1, start all over. You know, there's no, yeah. So, basically, you're going to be playing it a ton of times to get to the point where you can actually get through the entire game. You know, and there are... You know, as, as the levels progress, there'll get to be more and more of these places where it's not just that you have to be really, really quick. You basically have to know exactly what you're supposed to do if you don't want to lose health. And again, you don't have a lot of health, and if you start losing health, you might die really quickly. So, yeah. The... Uh, I suppose I could mention just a few of the bad guys. I'm not going to be giving all of them away. But since the very first one is Mysterio... So, you know, not, not a big secret there, and it is, it's pretty cool, you know, and you also get to fight the Green Goblin, of course, and I suppose you could just cover one more, number three, I think is Rhino, yeah, and the boss fights are pretty typical of the era, with basically the, the boss is going to do a bunch of attacks, and then you have to keep your eyes open, you, you have to keep dodging all these attacks, of course, and then you have, to, you have to keep your eyes open, suddenly he's going to be, you know, vulnerable for just a few seconds, maybe just a single second, and you have to be standing in the right place, ready to attack, and attack at that exact moment. And, yeah, again, it's, uh, they're, they're pretty tough, but also very, very fun. Also, something, a, a detail I quite like that they, they didn't need to do, when you when you're attacked by Rhino, your webbing is going to bounce right off him. It, it never hurts him. You have to actually punch him, you know. So, yeah. I suppose this is a good uh, time as any to get into the web shooting. Basically, I think that you can pick up things that give you special attacks briefly. But other than that, it's just a regular attack where you shoot a little bit of web and... Yeah, that'll, you know, knock out an enemy, and that can be extremely useful. Sometimes in boss fights, and sometimes just against regular enemies, because, you know, if, if you get too close to them, yeah, you know, they might really, really mess you up. And, yeah, that's, that's basically it. The, the way you shoot webbing, and I think they did a pretty good job of this, it's on the regular attack key, I, guess, I don't know, the B key, I guess, I don't, I don't really think about it, and you have to hold the button down, 
if you don't hold the button down, you'll just do a regular punch, you know. So, yeah, I, I can't think of a single time where I accidentally did one trying to do the other, you know. <laughs> Which, I'm afraid there are things like that in the game. I'll get to that in a little bit. The Other than that, you can, of course, swing through the city. Well, through the level, anyway. And, yeah, I've tried a couple of other Spider-Man games from this period. I can't think of any other than this one that... I haven't tried all of them, but this is the only of them that I've tried where you can actually swing like Spider-Man, and it works pretty well. Sometimes you have a lot of trouble entering into it. That's what I was mentioning before. That's one of the things, anyway. And it can sometimes be a little difficult. He can sort of hang in the air from mid-webbing, yeah, mid-swing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly how that's supposed to work in the real world, but real world Spider-Man, anyway. That can be a little difficult to enter into and get back out, because sometimes you really want to. Sometimes you will want to wait before swinging on. Swinging through the level doesn't get you higher than, like, the, the regular screen, but it does keep you above these thugs walking around on, you know, at street level. And you can do it anywhere. When you fight Green Goblin, you're atop a building. You know, makes sense. You want a, a good air fight. You, you want air around them to, for an optimal kind of fight. It doesn't make sense for him to be flying around in an alley, you know. Anyway, when you know, even up there, he can still swing through the level. And sometimes it's not a good idea to swing through the level, and sometimes it, like I said, it really keeps you above these, you know, mere street thugs. Now, the... In the air, in, in the swing position, you can do a sort of kick. It makes a decent amount of sense that he can actually punch from that position, you know, with but both arms are occupied, but yeah, he, he can kick. And do note, before you start swinging all over the place, ask your wife, no, make, make sure that you don't yourself get hit. Especially, like I said, you can, you can be above, up above this building and it can help you get past some of the, actually I think, I'm pretty sure you have to be swinging some of the time when, you know, going from one tall building to another because you can't make the jump. You have to be swinging and stuff is going to come at you. You have to kick all of it. If you get hit once, that's apparently enough for Spider-Man to lose his cool and just, you know, fall down and die. Lose one of those two lives that I was talking about. So, yeah. I guess I should get into the... The, the basic punching and kicking stuff. The... They, they do some of the same with, as, as the, the Power Rangers game. They make a, a mistake of making it sometimes difficult to hit, you know, hit a crouched enemy, basically. If you are, if, if Spider-Man is staying, of course you can you can crouch yourself. If Spider-Man is just standing or walking, he'll do a straight-out punch, you know, kind of Bruce Lee thing. Actually, maybe he's just pushing them away because he's so weak in this game. It, it is an interesting animation, anyway. And, yeah, that obviously hits, you know, enemies in the torso, provided they're not crouched. If he kneels, he'll kick up. Not straight out, but up. So, yeah, again, he's not really hitting something that's, you know, in a, in a crouched position. So, yeah. Also, a an, an quick note on the webbing, save up your web. You'll need it later. You, you know, you can use it really early on, but you, you probably will want to keep it for later. Now, the... Yes, so that's one thing, that the crouched thing. Another is, other than shooting them with webbing, and again, I, I guess this is what they intended us to do. 
Spider-Man is no good at any kind of range because yeah, the, the enemy is pretty much... One thing I found that actually works is crouching down and then waiting for them to get close enough and then punching because the, excuse me, the stock thug typically attacks in like this this level, so the upper. So if you just crouch down, then, you know, kick up at them a bunch of times, you know, well, once for each enemy until you hit them anyway, if you hit them. That, that seems to be the best way to, to do it, which isn't very Spider-Man like. It's, it doesn't quite have that, you know, many times the strength of a normal man a thing to it that he has to crouch and yeah, but that's, that, that was how they made it, unfortunately. The, the music isn't bad and the, the sound effects are, are decent enough. The basic look of it is, you know, obviously it's as, as a, the, the level expected for a game from this period. Spider-Man has his classic suit on, and in general I think all... Actually, maybe this is before the Ultimate Burst began, now that I think about it. Anyway, well, there were other suits still. Anyway, I think pretty much all the suits are the... and, and you know such are the, the classic ones, and the enemies, you know, the, the boss enemies use the powers that you'd expect. Rhino uses his brute force and comes right at you, you know. Mysterio is teleporting all over the place with, with this smoke that harms you, and, you know, Green Goblin uses pumpkin bombs and flies around. It all makes a lot of sense, but again, like I said, they have a basic, you know, they, they don't respond that much to what you do, they just have these pre-programmed, what's it called, paths that they travel along and, you know, attacking all the way and then suddenly they arrive at a point where they're vulnerable briefly and you have to attack them for that, so yeah. I should maybe also talk a little bit about the climbing up buildings. Basically, there are only these two ways of, you know, these two types of levels, either you are walking you know, side scrolling, or you are climbing up a building and, you know, obviously scrolling upwards. And either way, you can never go back, you know, because, you know, home is a state of mind, it's not a real place. No, the, 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 the climbing up is, especially in an early level, extremely tough. They, they actually implement spidey, the, the spidey sense, which I thought was pretty cool, but you'll kind of wish that they had just not done it at all. Basically, you're climbing up and suddenly the, the lines appear above Spidey's head, and that means that something is falling directly where he is crawling. And again, if it hits him, it'll take a chunk out of his health, as usual. So that means you have to climb to either side. And sometimes, especially near the end of levels, where it gets really, really tough, just a ton of stuff will be falling. And it's like, there, there's no safe place for me to be. There, there always is. You know, the, it, it is possible to get through almost all of this game losing no health. <sighs> Good luck trying to figure out all the, all the little t t tricks to it. But yeah, it, it actually is just barely possible. And, yeah, also when climbing up, you know, people will open their windows and they won't have a conversation with, you know, the, the hero because it's not Batman and it's not the 60s, but they will try to smack at you with a, a baseball bat. There are also windows in some of the other levels. Or they will shoot at you and, or shoot at you, they will actually just shoot to either side, and this is kind of cool, they actually, yeah, it's basic but still cool, they will respond to which side they're on, you know, say they're in the middle of the level, you know, middle, if you climb here they'll shoot this way, if you climb over here they'll shoot that way, so you basically have to either time it so that you climb past when they're not firing, I, I guess that could work, personally I just always, you know, try to knock them out, and they t tend to be pretty easy to actually take care of. Although I'm not entirely sure why it is that Spider-Man does a, a mid-air 
Mambo number five move to to knock them out. I I don't know. He, maybe he just watched Spider Man three and felt inspired or something. But uh, yeah. Anyway, they're much more harm, harmless to actually knock out like that than the ones with the baseball bats, where you really have to time it properly. Because, you know, their bat against you always tends to win again. You know, there's no... Yeah. I suppose that pretty well covers the entire game. So, yeah, once again, just really, really tough game, but pretty fun. It, you know, they, they clearly got into you know, what would make sense for locations and what what enemies, what boss enemies would be fun to fight, you know, and if you can get past the... Some people are just going to play a couple of seconds of this game and say, you know what, life's too short, and I, I don't blame them. It, it is, you know, pretty poorly programmed fighting from, you know, they made Spider-Man way too weak instead of just... I don't know, basically, well, if they had just made the enemies maybe be able to block, and you be able to block, something like that, you know. Actually, one quick thing that I almost forgot, jumping. Sometimes you have to jump really far, sometimes you have to jump really tall, sometimes you have to do both. It often is really, really difficult, and I don't know what to tell you, I can't really give you a like a, a fix-all to that. It's just, it's gonna be extremely frustrating. That's that's really all I can say. I There's no way to make sure that it always works the way it should. Again, poor programming. I can't really think of anything else. It, it seems like you just have to try a bunch of different things and sometimes you'll think you got it and then later it'll seem like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe not, really. And also, you will actually need Spider-Man-like reflexes and a basic Spidey sense, that kind of sixth sense, to get through this game. Even if you practice a ton and play it, you know, countless times, it's... yeah. But it's, it's pretty satisfying to get through, you know, in, in that kind of yes, I beat the challenge kind of way. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.